to all of the churches who are planning a helicopter egg drop this Easter or an extravaganza, might I suggest you take this thought experiment and rethink what you're planning on doing the day our Lord rose from the grave. Imagine just for a second that you are a hero who rescued 20 children from a burning building. The city informs you they want to celebrate your heroic deed by giving you a parade. And as you enter the parade in your honor, you see this. Your name isn't mentioned. Your heroism isn't mentioned. It feels like you're at the wrong parade. Now imagine how Jesus Christ must view Easter parades. That's what this is. It's an Easter parade, a celebration that has absolutely nothing to do with Jesus. Can you imagine the fury he must feel? Even though peanut butter cups are pretty tasty, they hardly capture the significance of Easter, an actual historical event whose importance cannot be overstated. But let me try. The event known as Easter starts before the beginning of time. That's right, before time began, God hatched a plan. That would be an Easter pun for you. A plan that actually involves you. Here's the plan. God decided to create the heavens and the earth and to put one man and one woman in charge, Adam and Eve. Together, God and his appointed authorities would fellowship together in his creation. God gave the man and the woman one rule. Do not eat from this tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In this rule, God was giving humanity a choice. Submit and obey me, your maker, or disobey me and incur the sentence for breaking your creator's laws. Death. Spoiler alert, they chose poorly. They disobeyed God and ate from the tree, an act of cosmic treason, choosing to rebel against the author of life hey. and incur his temporal and eternal punishment. But here's where the story gets personal. Hmm. You and I join Adam and Eve in their rebellion. You and I disobey hey. God willingly and knowingly. We lie, hate, steal, blaspheme, lust. You know, we break the Ten Commandments a lot. In other words, you and I deserve the same fate as Adam and Eve. Death, eternal death. But here's the good news. God is incredibly kind and merciful, so he prepared a plan to rescue Adam and Eve and all their sinful offspring from the death sentence they deserve. It's here, at the beginning, God promised a deliverer that would rescue humanity from the consequences of their sin. That is actually the story of the whole Bible. From peasants to kings, we follow the family of this promised savior, the Israelite living in the broken world as they look forward to the arrival of their deliverer. Enter Jesus Christ. Jesus was born of a virgin in Bethlehem, never disobeyed God, miraculously healed the sick, and announced he was God in flesh. In fact, it was this claim of divinity that stirred his fellow Jews to plot against him. They said that any man who claims to be the God of all creation should be put to death. And that's precisely what happened to him. Just as God had planned, and just as hundreds of prophecies predicted, Jesus was stripped and beaten by soldiers, whipped until his back was a bloody and shredded mess. He had a crown of thorns smashed onto his head. Then barely able to stand, he was forced to carry the cross he'd be nailed to, naked. The creator of all the universe had long spikes driven through his wrists and ankles, held up and mocked by a crowd as he slowly suffocated. In one final gasp, 
Jesus voluntarily gave up his spirit, dying the death of a common criminal. This was all God's prearranged plan before eternity began. Jesus Christ, God in flesh, received the wrath of God on behalf of sinners. Three days after Jesus died, he rose from the dead, proving that he was truly God and that in him, mankind can be forgiven and restored to their creator. This is the story of Easter, the story of the single most important day in the universe, the day the entire Bible points toward, the day that split history. Easter is that monumental. Easter is that pivotal. To celebrate the holy day that divides the calendar with colored eggs and sugary treats is to seriously miss the importance of a day that determines the eternal destiny of every single person ever to live. Let's celebrate Easter. We should celebrate Easter. In fact, we should actually celebrate Easter with the intensity we celebrate Christmas, or frankly, even more, because Easter is the high holy holiday of the church calendar. But let us celebrate it for what it is. Jesus Christ, God in flesh, rose from the dead as our great God and Savior. He deserves more than a silly parade. He deserves more than egg drops and Easter bunnies. Church does not exist to amuse children. It exists to glorify the Son of God who rose from the grave. Do the kids a favor. Stop amusing them. Start teaching them to celebrate, really celebrate what the Lord has done for us on Easter Sunday. Discuss. If your marriage looks like this, Cue the B-roll, please. But you'd like your marriage to look like this. Then we have just what the doctor ordered. It's a wretched box. The Joy in the Home bundle contained therein, for those of you who love the King James Version, drive-by marriage. It will change the dynamic of your marriage. I don't care what shape it is currently in. It will bring joy to your marriage. I'm not kidding. But... Let's say your kids, they act like this. B-roll, please. But you'd like them to behave like this, and who of us wouldn't? Contained in the wretched box, we have drive-by parenting and the rather ill-fitting mm, reset for parents. All of these resources bundled so that your home will no longer look like this. Okay, seriously. Instead, it'll look like this. Get your Joy in the Home Wretched Bundle Box Thing Contraption at wretched.org. Who are you? Who, who? Hoo hoo, I really want to know who are you, why? Because Wretched is hiring and if you have organizational skills, if you have marketing experience, we want to know who are you. Please visit wretched.org slash careers if you'd like to work in a high energy place that propagates the gospel to the lost and seeks to encourage the saints by teaching theology and you'd love to apply your skills to this ministry so that God can be glorified, then tell us, who are you? Who, 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 wretched.org slash careers.